Hey everybody, today we're going to do a little repair. This uh, finial is uh, <clears throat> like the ones on top of the mast. This is the front four mast, they call it. And right there on the end, there's a little wooden finial made out of basswood. The uh, mast wood is uh, walnut. And then there's a little bit of balsa wood. That's what this paneling is here on the lower end of the mast but they use a combination of different kinds of wood but today we got a repair I was moving this around the other day working on some dead eyes and I busted this one off that goes back here and I think when this ship is done that's for the the flag the colors fly at so I got a drill bit that's the size of the end of this flag pole the other end is bigger because it's a tapered so I'm gonna attempt to drill this out without stabbing myself and yeah, there was a little bit of CA glue on there I had these two pulleys with that stainless steel wire on there That's part of the repair. I can feel that harder walnut in there. One of my little tricks I got is a uh, take a piece of sandpaper and I tape it down on the table over there to my right and that gives me a good sanding surface so that'll work there but before I put some wood glue on that and glue it I'm gonna cheat again. I drill a little hole so that's 0.04 inches about one millimeter which if you get much, I got drill bits that go smaller than that though. Quite a few of them. If you get much smaller than that, you're not gonna get any wire or thread through there. So, one millimeter I found is pretty good for different places whenever you gotta get wire or thread through it. OK, 
Okay. Let me clean that up a little bit with the sandpaper. Now, before I don't want to lose that, I got to clean this end up and re drill that out where it broke off at. So, a while back on one of my videos, I talked about a scam while I was working on the ship. Of course, the scam ain't got nothing to do with the ship, but just something to talk about while I'm working. And uh, <clears throat> this was a Social Security scam <clears throat> so that's 3.17 millimeters 3.16 0 0.120 inches Security scam. It was uh, pretty scary because I'm on Social Security disability, and when they called. They said that uh, we're going to freeze your assets and that somebody had rented a car in my name in Texas and was trafficking drugs over the border and uh, that I was going to be contacted by law enforcement. And they were going to freeze my assets and they wanted me to go get this uh, ID that's offered by the Social Security uh, Department, which is a scam. Yeah, it's not real. Like a national ID, you know, into the world, everybody's going to be. monitored so I was a little worried because you know they're gonna freeze my assets and one of the reasons I was worried is because I'd done a little um, side job last year and I only made like two thousand dollars so it wasn't enough to raise any red flags and the side job was consulting work I wasn't physically doing anything that would um, jeopardize my status as a social security disability applicant but I was still worried you know because I just finished filing taxes and, and uh, the guy gave me his name and all this wanted me to uh, Go down to Walmart or Publix, you know, it's a grocery store, and get this federal security card, worldwide federal security card. Yeah, right. And uh, then they could put my assets under that new card, and I wouldn't have to worry about losing all my money. I ain't got no money anyway, so if you're going to try to scam me, you're going <clears> to. <throat> 
be in bad shape because I'm broke to start with. So. I was telling the lady, yeah, this sounds like a scam. She said, oh no, you're, you're going to be under arrest. We're going to take all your money because you, you're, uh, you prosecuted for trafficking drugs on the border. So I said, no, because somebody tried to scam me before. Few months back I talked about it on my, one of my videos and the scam was uh, Publishers Clearing House. Oh, you won 3.2 million dollars. I'm trying to clean up the end of that other face of the pole there that broke off before I Get up in there with his glue and all. So I told the lady, well, go ahead and freeze my assets if that's what you gotta do. I'm not going down and getting this card because I know once I do that they're gonna be getting money out of me somehow. Uh, I wasn't gonna follow through with it to figure out how they were gonna do it, but so you know, eventually after 30 minutes on the phone, I hung up, you know, like to waste their time. Hung up on her and I uh, Googled the uh, phone number that she called me from. And uh, these numbers are one digit off from the real social security office in the Houston, Texas area. And <clears throat> That's part of what the scam is talking about here. The real number, 772, and they were 773. So, after seeing that there was, you know, numbers that were really close to the real number, did some more googling and came up with that page that talked about people getting called getting scammed with social security all worried they're going to lose their benefits or whatever they do this card and somehow they later on in the scam they get get you to send money or something i'm sure that's how it goes so Before I glue this on, got this little rat nest here. I don't know if I can salvage this or not. But the, the moral of the story is when somebody calls you uh, you know Social Security office or most any government office is not going to call you on the phone. They're going to send you a letter. And uh, you get a phone call from somebody saying they're from disability or from you know your social security benefits, whether or not it's disability, it could be just your regular retirement. They're not real. So 
So you must be aware. There's lots of people out there that are trying to take advantage of anybody. It doesn't matter if you're old or young. They're gonna. <coughs> they're gonna try to take advantage of you. And you get all worried and fall for it. They got you. So, Publishers Clearing House is not going to call you. Now, if you entered the contest and you won, they're going to surprise you at your front door. Just like you see on TV. And their office is not in Puerto Rico. <laughs> That's where their phone number traced back to when I traced it. They almost got me on that because I was in the parking lot at Walmart. And fixing to go inside and I wanted the details of what I'm supposed to do when I go inside. And the guy's telling me, oh, you get a money order for 1% of that $3 million. And send that to me and that's the taxes that... Uh, you got to pay on the transaction. There's people staged in Lakeland waiting on you to come give you the money. But you got to send this first before you can get the money. Yeah, right. So I got just enough left there. Make a little twist knot. <laughs> Maybe. Now if you can. One of these pairs of pliers is a little better than the other one. So, scammers beware. This old man is privy to you. It's the second time this year. That ain't coming off unless I break it. It definitely ain't gonna come loose. So the plans show two block and tackles up here. Sure, one of them's for the flag. I'm not sure what the other one is yet. That probably goes up to that fort or a rear cell. There's another um, another mast pole that comes out of this rear mast that goes back. And there's a sail in this area that's parallel with the mast. And then all the other sails in this area are perpendicular. I'm going to do that one later on. Just because the simple fact of I've got a lot of work to do on this thing. My hands in and out of here all the time. That's why this broke off. I get, get too excited. 
too far ahead of myself. Not paying attention. Busted that thing off. So I'm gonna put a little dab on the maybe get that part out and drop the whole camera. Yeah, the glue's okay. Yeah, if you don't use these things all the time, they get all gummed up. I just snapped that dispensing lid off of it. Okay, I got that all cleaned out. <laughs> These glue caps are really great if you use them all the time. I had to use this one <clears throat> in a month or so. Everything in there was all gummed up. So, Back to our, I don't need a whole lot on here because some of it's going to get trapped on this edge. And then always remember to close your glue when you're done. When that dries, you can peel it off real easy and you should be good to go for next time. Now, uh, one of the other exciting things that meaning to get to for a while this is some liquid gold leaf and uh, classic gold uh, model number 6110 uh, pretty sure it's an alcohol oil base because it says Vapors may be harmful, but uh, the back of the ship here and this detail on the side, eventually I'm going to probably do all these cannon doors just to make them pop out a little better. I'm going to pick a good size brush that's fairly fat because I got a lot of real estate to cover there and then a little one a little one for those edges and stuff and <clears throat> this one had some oil based paint on it before and I cleaned it up with some mineral spirits and it's still a little stiff but it'll work for what we want to do here and it's already set up for oil so 
little thing I've learned is to let your brush soak. in the paint. In this case it's a gold leaf. Before you start <clears throat> painting. Oh yeah. I've got a lot of other colors to go on in the back here. It's going to have some blue and some yellow. This uh, gold is a little off. Uh, Expensive looking. Them Italians. You know, like the Italian mafia, they always had gold diggers pillaging from other countries. I don't really know if Italy has. Gold mines probably do. They're not going to be like the ones in Africa and Asia and Alaska, California. This is going to really look cool. And it went off real easy too. Wow. That's an eye popper, ain't it? Move that out of the way because I'm going to spin this baby around. I'm going to put my drill bits over there because i got to go put those back in the index. I always turn your calipers off. Save your battery. Too much stuff. I'm just checking to make sure there's not dust and stuff on there. Well, 
when I was a teenager, my first job was painting signs. Uh, painting signs by hand, lettering signs. Eh? And an old British guy worked for the sign contractor. You know, because he was an employee there like me. And uh, he taught me how to letter signs, how to lay out stuff, and about the different kinds of paint they use, because signs have to be pretty robust to stand up in the weather and the sun. You can't just use regular old house paint or whatever on They'll fade away in a few years if you do, so they spend money on the paint that I thought was really expensive. But that sign really looked good. And it stayed looking good for 10, 20 years. Now this plate in the back is a sort of a bronze. Bronze color, it's a dark, darker. It's made out of some metal too, probably pewter or something like that, they stamp it. But, uh, I'm not going to paint it gold. I think later on that'll get some uh, highlights where the windows are and stuff with some blue and yellow. And then I'll put some other colors in where these little leaves and stuff are. And get real fine detail on that. Here. 